Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here and I got a real treat for you. Um, today I want to share with you some of my maquettes that I've been able to collect over the years. Uh, over my 21 year career working for Walt Disney Feature Animation. Now maquettes have a very cool history at Feature Animation at Disney. Um, they first kind of started around all the way back to Snow White. If you go all the way back to Snow White, Mark Davis, who was one of the original nine old men, he actually did a little sculpture of Snow White's head. And he wanted to see her head from different angles because he was animating her and he had some difficult angles and he was having a hard time kind of seeing in his mind uh, how to draw her. And he wanted to see, okay, if, 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 you know, if I'm looking at her from this rear three-quarter angle, do I see her nose and, you know, that sort of thing. And it kind of stuck. And so that started the model department, which was headed up by Joe Grant. Now, Joe Grant, his credits go all the way back to Snow White and, uh, and Pinocchio, I believe, or Pinocchio. And uh, I was lucky enough to work with Joe Grant. Joe uh, passed away a few years ago. Uh, I think he was almost 100 years old. And um, he would, I remember when we were making Brother Bear, he would sit in with us and, and give us notes and all kinds of great stuff. As a matter of fact, the cricket, the cricket in, uh, in Mulan was a, an idea that was put forward by Joe Grant. So Joe was around for a long time and he started up this model department and they started making models for all these characters. And, um, and so as the films were made uh, in the early years, uh, certain, number, um, certain model, number of models were made for each character. Then they were handed out to animators and cleanup artists. And they were used as reference. That's all they were, really, was just these drawing reference uh, pieces. And, um, and then they were handed off back you know, to the department, and then they were you know, filed away. Well, over the years, they, got, they, they kind of built up uh, a little art following. And so um, it's a big collector's item now. And I happen to have quite a few from the films that I've worked on. And I wanted to share them with you. So the first one here, this is the first character that I was ever responsible for from a design standpoint and animation. I designed Raja the Tiger from Aladdin. And this is the maquette for Raja. And I actually used it. I, uh, I came up with the pose, uh, drew up the pose from different angles, and then handed it off to the sculptor who sculpted it in clay, and then uh, they made several casts in resin. And so this is my cast uh, as the supervising animator. And then what we do is we send these to the ink and paint department, and then they would paint them up with the actual colors that they have in the film. So this is Raja. And like I said, we would use them to look at different angles. You know, like the rear three quarter is always the, is always the tough one. And so we would look at that, copy it, and that would be our reference for our animation. So it's very cool. This is uh, another character that I created. This one was for Mulan, and this is, uh, this is Yao. I also did all the ancestral ghosts in Mulan, but uh, it's kind of hard to uh, sculpt ghosts. So, <laughs> but we did do one of Yao, and, uh, and it's, it's interesting because if you watch Mulan, Mulan has a very interesting uh, art direction and character design, uh, uh, the way everything's kind of laid out. And uh, it's very flat in its design. And so taking those characters and thinking about them in three-dimensional forms uh, is kind of difficult sometimes. And so I came up with a pose for Yao that is pretty dynamic no matter what angle you look at it from. And that's, I did that on purpose because I really wanted to have that, that ability to reference different, you know, different angles on him. And once again, it's that rear three quarter side view, those types of things that get a little wonky or, you know, the up, the up shot too. Those are always difficult shots to, to figure out. And so these maquettes really make it possible to, uh, to envision that and see it. And some of them get painted, some of them don't. So obviously this guy didn't get painted. Now here's one that we all remember. This is one of my most prized maquettes. Um, here we got young Simba from The Lion King. Now, I created not Simba, but Nala. This one didn't get painted. But here's my Nala right here, sculpted by the great Ruben Procopio. And uh, um, they go together. You can see right here, these, these two go together. And um, I really, this is one of the high points of my career as far as 
uh, characters. I really loved animating Nala. And I also helped out with Simba a little bit. But Mark Henn, who is the supervising animator of Simba, and I created Nala, he and I worked together a lot. I created Raja, he created Jasmine. So he was he's a big time animator and I was a kind of a junior animator coming up. And so I would take the more minor character, he would take the major character, and I learned so much from Mark. Uh, he's still at Disney, still an animator at Disney, and uh, just just amazing. And uh, But once again, you know, here's our characters and we look at them and see the different angles and that sort of thing. It's very cool. Now, years later, I was very lucky uh, and honored to have uh, directed the movie Brother Bear. And so I've actually got an entire set of maquettes from Brother Bear, every character. Uh, but I thought I'd pull this one out and show you. It's kind of big, a little bit heavy. But uh, here's Kenai and Coda. If you've ever seen the movie, Kenai is a human that's been turned into a bear. So I've actually got a human maquette of him and the bear maquette. But here he is. And he was, the, he was animated by Byron Howard, the great Byron Howard, amazing animator, amazing uh, a, a director, story artist, two-time Academy Award-winning director, Byron Howard. But uh, back when he was an animator, he, uh, he created uh, Kenai. And then Coda was created by my good friend Alex Cooperschmidt. Uh, who is still at Disney and animating. And so um, a lot of these, they, they hold so much history and really wonderful memories for me. And I just absolutely love them. And I love sharing them. And I wanted to share one more here. This one, I just want to show you how big these get. So in, in uh, Brother Bear, uh, we have the mother bear, that uh, Coda's mom that we see out on the glacier in the beginning of the film. And uh, Tony Cipriano was our sculptor for these, for these maquettes. And uh, he did all of our Brother Bear maquettes. And, uh, and if you know my website, CreatureArtTeacher.com, Tony is, uh, teaches sculpture on our website. But he did this beautiful job of sculpting Mom. You know, she's this real, you know, more real than I think we've done in a long time in any Disney film uh, representation of a grizzly bear and uh, she's just and, and this thing's really heavy that's why I'm putting it back down on the table I get so paranoid about dropping these and handling them so I try not to handle them too too much but um, let me move these over so you can see a little bit better uh, the mom and just how beautifully sculpted she is really beautiful anatomy. Uh, she was created, uh, designed, and animated by my friend Rune Beneke, who is quite simply one of the best animators in the world, I, I, I'm absolutely convinced of. And uh, he created some of the just incredible animation of this bear uh, in Brother Bear. And, uh, and he did it all out of his head. The guy's a genius. But really, really beautiful work. So... Those were, these are maquettes and, uh, and other studios have picked up on that and they make them and, and uh, they've become a, kind of a, like I said, a, a kind of an art form now. So um, especially in the 3D world, you don't really need maquettes in the 3D world in, in computer animation because you're not drawing them. But, uh, but they still make them, people still collect them and uh, they've come, become a, a really great collector's item. But if you can find a maquette from a film that was hand-drawn, like the old Disney films, the ones through the 90s and 80s and, and the early 40s and all that, then uh, you've got something really special. And so I've got this collection and I, I love sharing it. I love talking about the history of the maquettes and, and what they're used for. And it, you know, it was so much fun back in the day to take people through our studio and you'd see all the animators and, and artists working and you'd see all these maquettes sitting on their desks and people would use them and, and draw from them. So that's how we would keep our characters looking consistent in our films. So if you ever wondered, this is one of the ways we did it and how we drew them from difficult angles, we would use these models. So I hope you learned something today. And uh, why don't you uh, go on out there, put some beauty back into the world, and I'm gonna talk to you next time. Thanks.